students, so welcome to our video on VCM Editor Basics. <clears throat> now this is where you're going to get a basic overview of how the editor works. Uh, the editor's purpose is to allow you to make changes to the tune file. It's also allowing you to download the tune file from the car and go ahead and upload those changes. So why don't we go ahead and start by teaching you how to download the tune from your car. You can begin by opening up the editor like we have here. This is exactly as it opens. It will ask you if you want to proceed. If you have a beta version, just say OK. And we're going to choose to either click straight on the little green icon, or you can go to Flash and then Read Entire. They do the same thing. So since we're doing this uh, recording for you live here, we're going to go ahead and uh, pretend that it's now downloading the tune file from the car. Once it's beginning the process of this, uh, you might find that some of the gauges get a little bit strange. They might go to zero or 100% or the lights might flash on and off or whatnot. But uh, we'd recommend that you never interrupt the process when it's downloading or uploading. Now, downloading is not nearly as critical uh, because it's just reading the information from the computer. It's, it's not an issue if it gets uh, interrupted uh, very often, not a big deal. However, during an upload, Sometimes it can be more critical if it gets interrupted in the middle of it. So once you've downloaded the tune file, the uh, HP Tuner here is going to stop and ask you if you want to uh, go ahead and license that tune file. Now, since I can't do that since I'm live here with you, I'm going to go ahead and open a file that I don't have a license for. So let me go ahead and find one real quick. Okay, now this is a customer's car. This is looking just like it would download. It'll come up with this screen here. It'll say you do not have a license for this file. Now, you, you have two options here. You can show the license options if you're interested in using your credits. It's two credits per uh, car or truck. So uh, doing that would allow you to pick uh, and choose. Or no thanks. If you choose no thanks, it will allow you to see everything in the tune it just won't allow you to make any changes. So in that in that manner, you can go ahead and do that. Look at your buddies uh, if you want and not have to pay for credits. Um, or you could look at tunes. People have emailed you to try and get some ideas if you have to do that. So no thanks would allow you to open it. You can see everything. You just can't make changes and save them. So option two is to show license options. Let's go ahead and pick that. Okay. Now since our interface isn't actually connected here, it's not going to allow us to do that. So hang on one second, and I'm going to go ahead and grab it and hook it up. Okay, now I've gone ahead and hooked up our HP Tuners MPVI box, which is basically the USB cable. It goes to the black and silver box here. And uh, now that we're plugged into our laptop, I'm going to go ahead and hit Show License Options. The software right now is looking and talking to the... Uh, silver and black box, which is the MPVI box, just to see what license options you have. How many credits do you have available? So what we have here is the response from the box. This is telling our software what licenses we have. So for example, credits available, zero. So I don't have any, any credits on this box. We've used all of our credits. Um, so I could go buy more credits. In fact, you could call the tuning school and get your credits for 5% cheaper than you can straight through HP Tuners. Or you can buy them online at thetuningschool.com. Now that that plugs out of, way, out of the way, um, if you have credits, or once you have credits, you can go ahead and click on Single Vehicle License. Now every unit comes with 8 credits. It's only 2 credits per vehicle. So you can go ahead and click on Single Vehicle License if you're good to go. It'll then burn 2 credits. Those 2 credits will get married to that vehicle. And the way it works is it matches the VIN, uh, the VIN and the serial number. So it'll look at these two and it'll say, okay, we're married to this now. You could tune that car forever. It's good to go. You also have another option. You typically will have a third option here that'll say model year. And in fact, I'm going to try and open, a, open up a, another tune file that will demonstrate this. The reason this tune file does not is because this didn't come from a car. This came from a... GM, uh, GM Performance Parts crate motor. So there is no model year for that. You can only do a single license or all of the Gen 2, I'm sorry, the Gen 4 cars. 
I know it's confusing, so let's move over to it. Hang on. Open. Uh, let's see here. Okay, now we're back to our license options. I'm going to show. It's looking at our black, our box here. Okay, here we have it. I still don't have credits. I haven't bought any more credits. No big deal. But if I did, I could click single vehicle, just this particular car. Your model license will allow me to uh, license all 2011 Grand Sports, which is a Corvette model, for those who don't know. It would cost me 11 GM credits to do that. So uh, it is cheaper to do it that way, to buy the year model. So if I was a Corvette shop and I knew I was going to do lots of Corvettes, I'd buy the year model. So the next time I got a 2011 Corvette, I would be good to go. Alternatively, if you have the cash, it is much cheaper to buy your credits in bulk. So credits, as opposed to being around $49.99 per credit, typically, like if you buy two at a time, they drop much cheaper into the low $30 range to the $40 range, just depending on the quantities that you're buying. So um, most people are doing single vehicle licenses. So if this was your car and you downloaded your tune, you could click on single vehicle license and then commit. Now since I don't have that here, we've gone ahead as if we did. We cannot make changes. You'll notice that we cannot save the file. Okay. So now we can go ahead and talk about how the BCM editor is laid out. Uh, we've gone ahead and downloaded our file, and now we can see the uh, the layout here is based on engine, transmission, fuel system, and then we have other things like fans and speedometer changes. Most of what you'll, you'll be doing is in the first three here. Uh, engine, I like to click straight on this because now we can look at the entire layout. Put the box in here so you can see it. As opposed to clicking here, where you have to pick from general, idle, or airflow. Once you get good at, at this, you might find this to be quicker, but generally we still like to kind of, you know, go straight here so we can look at all the options. So under engine, general, this is the first opening screen, tells you about cylinder size, where you would set cylinder volume and things like that. Um, you don't typically have to do anything with this because unless you increase the size of your engine, you wouldn't need to. But basically your HP tuners is divided up by idle, and then you have uh, where you set things like idle speed. These are all things that are covered in your um, in your course guide. You have your airflow settings, such as your minimum airflow. You also have things like VE, if your car is equipped with a VE table, which is also covered later in the course. Your fueling. Your general fuel, you have things like your stoichiometric, which is where your, your computer is set to 14.6, 14.7 for stoichiometric air fuel. In this case, if you look at this table, you're going, wow, what is this? Because it's not 14.6 the whole way. This is a newer car. It's a 2011. These are capable of using uh, flex fuel, and they have a sensor in the, in the vehicle that calculates the percentage of ethanol, which changes the air fuel ratio based on ethanol. So, again, complicated stuff you probably won't be using anytime soon. Um, however, in the fuel, you'll actually see flow rate for the injectors is here. Power enrichment settings are here where you can set the power enrichment, uh, commanded air fuel ratio, full throttle, all these sorts of little things. Spark advance, you have your high and low octane tables. I'll move this around a little bit here. Since we're here, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how this works because it's pretty commonly used. Your spark table is based on engine speed and cylinder air mass. And cylinder air mass is something you can actually see in the VCM scanner. It's a uh, method by which the computer calculates um, how full the cylinders are. So you could kind of visualize this as your idle area, and then you have this as kind of your, your mid-throttle zones here because you're between 40 and 60% full. And then you have your full throttle zones, which are typically, you know, 75 80% and higher. And then you have your areas here over 1, which would be over 100% full, which would typically be when you're seeing boost if you have a forced induction car. I know these are just quick overviews, but that the purpose of this video is really not to give you a full in-depth of each of these tables, just how this editor works in general. So you also have some other tabs here, torque management. Uh, these are covered in your course, as well as transmission. This is a six-speed uh, GM automatic transmission. 
you'll actually find that the uh, beginner's uh, course uh, that you have here covers the GM 4-speed automatics. We actually have a separate GM 6-speed automatic tuning course that is available for you. Um, however, it is $99 because there's about 35 or 40 pages worth of changes to do to tune the 6-speed automatic transmission. However, once you tune the 6-speed automatic transmission, you'll find it to be a heck of a lot better. There's a lot left in that. And then also, the rest of your tour here consists of fan settings, speedometer changes, things of that nature, where you want to change maybe your gear and tire size, you would do that here, uh, things like that. So the basic overview of the editor, you're going to want to follow the steps in your tuning course to figure out what you need to do and where. You'll notice that your tuning course comes with some laminated sheets. Those laminated sheets are meant to guide you based on the type of car you're working on. So we've divided it up into a, a bolt-ons car, a head cam car, and then you have a forced induction car. So you find what best matches your, um, your setup that you're working with, work your way through those steps, and they'll tell you what table to go look for, where to go find it, and things like that. You also have a white laminated sheet called the tuning tree, which is really cool because it'll tell you, hey, if, if you don't remember where the math table is to go make your math changes, hey, uh, here it is. Go to the following steps. Click on engine, airflow, math airflow frequency, airflow versus frequency. Therefore, you're not sitting there piling through thousands of tables and then calling going, I don't see it. So our goal is to get you raised up so you understand not only what you're doing, but how to easily find those things too. Okay, so finally, last couple things. We have our unit conversion tool. We've actually seen that before in the scanner videos. Let's pull that up real quick here. You can see the same exact thing here. And you have your flash. Commonly, guys, we have a the most common question in this uh, beginner side is when I do my uh, my right calibrations when I'm done making my tune changes and I want to upload. What's the difference here? We have a right calibration only, a right entire. What's going on? The right calibration only is what you do 99% of the time because most of the time you're only making changes to the tune. And when I say the tune, I mean the changes inside here in the tune anywhere calibration changes we're talking about as opposed to when you would use right and tire is when you make changes to the operating system so it's kind of like uh, this would be kind of like making changes to Microsoft Windows on your computer as opposed to making changes to maybe uh, some software that you're using like Excel so that's the best way I could describe it to you most of the time you're only making changes in the software as opposed to complete operating system changes and since we're here we might as well talk about them Operating system changes tell the computer how it's going to operate. Pretty simple, right? So you can say, hey, we have some things here we want to turn off, maybe like VATS. A lot of guys find that they're doing swaps into older cars. So the vehicle anti-theft system or VATS need to be disabled. Okay, here's where I can go do that. You have things like starter checks you can turn off here, traction control. You have uh, uh, your VCM enhancements, which are really cool. HP Tuners has gone to great lengths to create enhancements for you so you can keep using a stock computer even if you're going crazy with your car. So if you see the layout here under enhancements, you have some options such as a one bar map speed density enabled, I'm sorry, enhanced, or a two bar or a three bar. So sometimes people go crazy with boost, which is great because we all love speed. But if you're trying to make a really crazy car and you're using uh, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds of boost, you could use a three bar map system. So what that would do is that would change your uh, whole system here so it would read a three bar map sensor, not just a stock one bar map sensor. So the idea here, guys, and we'll get into this a little bit more on the advanced side, but uh, these the system is really capable, and you could really support pretty much anything you want to do here using the, uh, the VCM enhancements. And so if you had to do some VCM enhancements, it would tell you that you would need to do a right and tire. So lastly, you have some favorites. As you noticed here, let's say you were looking through a, uh, a particular table and you happen to, to use it quite often. Excuse me. Let me make sure I left click. You'll notice here you can do some, uh, some quickie things like add it to favorites so that it's in the list. I can hit OK. 
and next time I know it's going to be my favorite Swiss. So, also we have some other uh, uh, we have some other um, tables here we can look at some other things. Calibration details is useful if you don't know what you're looking at. Some people send you a file they don't they're not always very descriptive or if you have issues with what you're looking at and you just want to know you can go to this calibration details pretty cool it'll tell you what it came out of what the VIN number was the VCM ID the operating system which is another one of those keys that HP tuners uses when it locks your credits to this particular car it looks you know at your VIN number and your OS because as uh, GM goes through the year of a model you'll find that the uh, operating system IDs tend to change as they release updates or they make changes to the tune throughout the year as the cars get get made and they get feedback from the, the people on the road. Also controller dealer uh, details you don't typically need to know this stuff this is uh, just telling us this is an E38 controller and a T43 transmission controller nothing you'll normally use during your tune uh, process. However you will find a couple features here unlock ECM, tuner lock the ECM, and then auto uh, tuner lock, all of them that you can. So here's the thing, some people find that they like to lock their tunes, uh, some tuners like to do it, um, there are pluses and minuses to both, we don't uh, typically advise that people do that because it tends to leave the owner with a real problem should you not be around to do his tune again because that basically locks his computer to your HP tuners unit to where anybody else comes in and tries to download the tune file and help him or make a tune change then they will not be able to because it actually changes the security keys in the computer so only you would be able to unlock it in which case the owner of the car should he not be able to locate you he would have to go buy a new ECM so that's the downside a lot of people get really upset when for whatever reason they can't get back to the guy that did the tune they end up having to buy a new computer and they're pretty mad. On the flip side, some tuners like to do it to protect their work and also to protect themselves from, uh, I guess, people trying to look and see what, what they're doing and copy it. So that's the basic layout of how the editor works. Um, again, we'll do a little more in-depth on the particular tables later in the other videos. But for now, basically you need to know that this is how this thing functions. and. Save your file when you're done.